On today's episode of the Footglish podcast, I talk to a German fan, Martin Schmidt. What are fan and media expectations for Euro 2024 in Germany? Who will star for Germany in this tournament? Will Scotland be an obstacle in the opening game? What are some good phrases and collocations to use when talking about expectations? You will find out answers to all these questions in this episode of the Footglish podcast. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Denek and you're listening to the Footglish podcast, a podcast where you can learn English through football. And uh, as I said in the previous episode, Euro 2024 is here and it's hosted by Germany this time. It's in Germany. And that is why I have decided to invite as the first guest of this podcast, a German person, Martin. Hi, Martin. How are you? I'm fine, Stene. How are you? I'm okay. Much better now, now that uh, uh, this fantastic tournament is here. I'm really buzzing. Ex I'm excited. All that. How about you? Are you looking forward to it? Yes, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I'm um, yeah, it will start tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, the 14th of June, and mm -hmm. uh, our team will uh, play the first game in the tournament because of the host country start, right. start the, the tournament. Or the, the yeah, it's a tradition, tradition and yeah. you play against Scotland as well. Scotland and in I, Munich. In Munich, in the city of yeah. Munich. Yeah. And just to just to tell our listeners, you you are not from Munich. You're actually from Dortmund, right? Exactly. I'm from Dortmund, and I'm also a supporter of uh, my uh, football team, which is located in Dortmund. Yeah, it's called uh, Borussia Dortmund. And uh, I think yeah. we all know the team because you got to the Champions League final. Unfortunately, you lost uh, to Real Madrid, yeah. but. Uh, you know, yes. yeah. you played really well in that game. Yeah. But Martin, we are not going to talk about club football today because, exactly. of course, of course, we are covering the Euros here, and uh, we need to talk about the German team. So, um, first of all, Martin, you didn't have to qualify as the host nation. There was no qualification group for you, which means it was easier. But do yeah. you feel do you feel like you are ready? Your team is ready to show what you've got. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, some of the friendly matches um, before wasn't good, but um, I think it's important to show your performance when it's really important. Yeah, on the match days, yeah, from the championship, and Absol uh, therefore, absolutely. therefore, I'm. Yeah, I'm keen and I'm looking forward what happens. Yeah. These days. <laughs> well, the truth the truth will lie on the pitch, of course. Yes. And, uh, we will see what happens, you know. I think there are 24 teams and uh anything could happen, right? That's that's why we love the beautiful game football. That's why we yeah. love it. So obviously your national team coach is Julian Nagelsmann, Nagelsmann. right? Nagelsmann. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I want. Yeah. yeah, he started last year. Yeah, he uh, take over the team and got the um, the team manager last year. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will see what happens. Okay, so I, I want mm -hmm. to ask you about expectations. First of all, uh, your expectations, then your country's expectations. I want to know your the media's expectations. I want to know everything, Martin. So where do we start? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's yeah. my expectation. I hope we will um, will uh, come at least to the half final. Yeah, but I hope we, we, we uh, win the, the, the European Championship. But yeah, to be honest, the other teams are also in good conditions and uh, mm. so did you mean quarter final or semi final or what did you, which one did se you mean se uh, semi final would be semi final semi final you think it would be success 
yeah. would cut, would be considered success in Germany. So that's yeah. your personal that's your personal yeah. expectation. But what about the media and the fans? Yeah, the media, the fans are really um, yeah they, they are for for the European Championship yeah and um, and the the media yeah sometimes you you see uh, some experts speaking uh, which teams are are up for can I say are up yep. for the um, yep. for the for the cup yeah and uh, there are some some great teams there yeah and um, you hear uh, names like France mm -hmm. yeah Italy yeah and German also yeah but uh, but there yeah, are a lot of, a lot of teams who could win yeah. it basically so there's going to be quite a fierce competition and I, I understand I understand what you mean so expectations are high I think there yeah. is more extra pressure on you because of the fact that you're the host nation and also let's be honest martin germany when you say germany and football and euro you've always done well in the past so you have history you have a history of being really good in the tournament you also i would say you have a nickname of a tournament team even you are a tournament team. You do yes. ext extremely yeah. well in the tournaments. Yeah. So that's why, in my opinion, but you have to tell me if it's true. In my opinion, in Germany, the expectations are always through the roof. <laughs> yes, um, it's, it's uh, yeah, you're right. Um, Germany is really a tournament um, team. and um, But the, the last tournaments, um, they failed, and um, it's mm. it's long time ago when we we had uh, success. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. 2014. Yeah, the okay. World Championship in Brazil we won, and um, yeah, therefore we are under pressure to to deliver again. To deliver I think again. I think I think it's getting harder and harder because yeah. the, all these European teams. It, I feel like the, the 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 quality is kind of evening out. You know, it's not what mm -hmm. the gap the gap between the good teams and the bad teams is much smaller than what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So we have wow. really quality teams: Serbia, Croatia, Denmark. Pretty much every single country you name mm -hmm. are capable of beating almost anyone. I I feel on, on their day, right? So that's why it it's gonna be hard. But uh, let's hope for your sake that uh, your team lives up to your expectations obviously i'm supporting czechia as you probably know but yeah. uh, for for you on your behalf uh, of course i wish you all the best martin <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you okay let's talk about this a little bit more then so who is in your group so you are in group a as the host nation so you have scotland yeah. right scotland uh, hungary hungary uh, and switzerland Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are in Group A. Yeah. Do you think this is a tough group, or would you say that uh, it's not too bad? It's not too bad, I would say. Yeah. Famous last words, everyone. Famous last words. <laughs> what, what's your prediction? What's your prediction for tomorrow then? For tomorrow, I, 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 um, I don't bet, but for us, I can say I bet three-one uh, for Germany. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, we will see. We will see. I think sometimes it's a little bit harder to play the first match, you know. Yes, yes this is right. Yeah. The, the pressure is extreme and everybody was, is super excited about the tournament. And uh, sometimes, you know, like you have these teething problems, right? It's always hard to start something in sort of any um, activity of your life, you know. Yeah. So we will see. And uh, well, you said you support Dortmund. So, do you have any Dortmund players in the team, Martin? Are there any? Yes, we have three three players uh, in the team. Yeah. And um, it's uh, Niklas Füllkrug, yeah, Nico Schlotterbeck, and Emre Can. Emre mm -hmm. Can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other three players, and yeah. Okay, and uh, are any of these close to the starting lineup? 
I think um, Emre Can not. Yeah. Mm. He's a midfielder, but more in the back, back area of the midfield. And um, but it could be he could be a substitute in okay. some situations, yeah, if yeah. he is needed. Yeah. Why and, not? Um, mm, we will see. I, I don't know exactly if uh, uh, Nico Schlotterbeck in the defender position will play from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you happy with the nomination? And are the media generally satisfied with who Nagelsmann has brought to the tournament? Yeah, it's the the player are um, chosen. Can I say a chosen yeah, yeah. by the performance of the of the year, yeah, in the league, and um, therefore, um, therefore, if you don't have a good performance, yeah, as a player, as a football player, uh, a long performance, it's not one game, yeah, you need you have to take a look for the for the whole season, yeah, and um, yeah, and because. Um, Bayer Leverkusen won the Bundesliga this year. Um, there and are the, some and the cup and the and the cup exactly. Uh, therefore, uh, some players from Leverkusen are in this team because they had a really good performance this year. And um, like Andrich, right? Andrich and Wirtz. And... Wirtz, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. He's yeah, he's called this year the top player of Germany. He's a wonder kid. He's your German wonder kid. Yeah. He he has he has really excellent football brain in my opinion. I, I yeah. really like it. When mm -hmm. he's at his best, I thought he was uh going down with his performances towards the end of the season. But I think it's un understandable because he's so young. But when he's at his best, oh my god, he's unstoppable. The kind of passes he sees. Yeah, uh, he he it's amazing. He's a fantastic player, so skillful. And what about the goalkeeper situation? So I heard some things about that. So obviously Manuel Neuer is like uh, he has been the number one goalkeeper for as long as I can remember. Yeah, for a long, a long, long time. time. Yeah. But now he's getting on a bit. Now he's about thirty-eight years old, right? So yes. is his it position still strong or not anymore? Yeah, it started. The discussion started last. I think it was last year. He was uh, injured for a long time, and right. um, but he came back. And um, I don't know exactly because Nagelsmann was also a manager of Bayern Munich, and he yeah. knows um, Manuel Neuer really good. Perhaps it's it's uh, not an objective um, choose. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, many people say perhaps it's not the, the best hmm. goalkeeper choice. to hmm. choice exactly. Yeah, but it seems like Nagelsmann really trusts him. And yeah, he, yeah, he, he, trusts he, he will him. he will be your number one. And as we know, yeah. he's this kind of keeper is like a sweeper, sweeper keeper, right? He can yes. he can he hold can the play. ball and uh, distribute passes, and he's really good with his feet. Which... He's he's a really good goalkeeper, I have to say. Yeah, he's really good. But uh, in the in the last um, games before the European Championship, uh, the friendly matches, um, he failed uh, sometimes. Yeah, he did. He made some mistakes, and yeah. Uh, yeah, therefore he was he came into discussion. Can I say? He yeah, he came under uh, criticism. We could say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, who do you think will uh, star in this tournament for Germany? Who do you think will do really well? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I would say Viet. Yeah, and um, I think Tony Kroos also. Tony Kroos is 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 somebody who who has finished his professional career for uh, Real Madrid. He played his last yes. match. And yeah. this is his last tournament. Last tournament, exactly. And then yeah. he, and he, he, he's hanging hanging up his boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he's but he's a really uh, experienced player. He actually retired before, 
for the uh, national team. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he came back because Nagelsmann asked uh, if he could come back, and uh, yeah, he decided to do it. And but it's yeah, it's a really good, good player. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a personality as well, and yeah. you need you need some leaders on the pitch too. So yeah. I think that's that's a good choice, and obviously your your national team will benefit from it. Yeah. Okay, then Martin. Well, uh, thank you very much for featuring on uh, today's episode of the Food Glitch Podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, your appearance, and uh, thank you for telling us about the German team. Yeah. Good luck to you. But when yeah. when when you meet uh, the Czech team, I will not <laughs> say I will I cannot say good luck to you. So <laughs> I absolutely understand. <laughs> I th I think you would do you would do exactly the same if you had your yeah. own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for having me on your podcast. You very a pleasure to take you're place. Very, you're very you're very welcome, Martin. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Welcome back, everybody. In this part of the show, I would like to do my job, so to speak. As an English teacher, I should teach you some language. And today I thought I could talk about uh, expectations. For example, you can say high expectations, low expectations or zero expectations. These are combinations of words which collocate with the word expectations, right? So when you have high expectations, you expect a lot from the team, right? So the German media, they really, you know, uh, want the German team or think that the German team will do well, right? They have the expectations. They have really high expectations. Uh, on the other hand, uh, let's say in Czechia, the expectations are lower, right? Because we realize that we are not exactly one of the favorites. And if, let's say, if you have been losing for a long time, then your expectations are lowered. You have lowered expectations. And then we could talk even about no expectations or zero expectations. Okay. And then we can say that you, if you perform as expected, we can say that you live up to the expectations, right? You can meet expectations. If you meet your expectations, again, you will live up to them, right? You, you do exactly as expected. And if you do better than that, we say you surpass, you surpass expectations, okay? Or exceed as well. You can exceed or surpass expectations. The opposite would be, um, you could say just, we didn't live up to the expectations or we didn't meet the expectations, okay? Or... There are other words like underperform or even you could say underwhelm, right? Uh, to be underwhelming in the tournament or to disappoint. You can use you can use the this word as well. And um, then there are three phrases like to have nothing to lose, right? If you have nothing to lose, you are in a situation where uh, basically if you lose, it's not such a big problem, right? It's not such a big problem, but that means that the pressure is off, right? And perhaps that will uh, untie your legs, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, it will be easier for you to play. So to have nothing to lose is quite a good position to be in. It's similar to the phrase, a free hit. Then there is a phrase, the stakes are high. If the stakes are high, uh, the situation or outcome of the situation is very important, right? So for the German team, the stakes are really high, right? It's it's It really matters uh, how they do in the tournament, how they perform. It really matters because if they fail, uh, the German manager, the German players will be under heavy criticism. So... The stakes are really high for Germany. And then uh, another interesting phrase is against all odds. That's usually used when you're talking about underdogs and you don't expect these teams to win. You don't expect them to do well in the tournament. And if they do, if they do do well, then we can say that they uh, succeeded on against all odds. Yeah, they achieved success 
despite uh, very unlikely circumstances. They also overcame some challenges and obstacles that seemed impossible for them to overcome. All right, guys, so I hope this language is useful for you. I want to keep this up, yeah? It's part of the show. And, um, um, well, thank you for listening um, to the Footgrish podcast. As always, you can find this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the usual places. Please don't uh, forget to subscribe because, you know, it's a new podcast, so every listener counts. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening again. Um, until next time, bye.